So more items have been found within Cyberpunk after the latest 2.0 patch and today guys I've accumulated all things I believe brand new in one video. This isn't what's new with Phantom Liberty, this is what's new with 2.0. More stuff is coming so stay tuned for that. So today guys we have new iconics, new legendaries, new cars and much more and today we will get into it all. How's it going guys? My name's DPJ and if you do enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. Okay, so let's go. And these are what's new with 2.0. So let's start with the Axolotl Cyberware. Although heavy on the RAM, this thing is really crazy. 10.5% cooldown instantly for all Cyberware after neutralizing an enemy. I mean... I feel this one comes in best when you're on a roll and cracking heads to keep this thing active but either or guys this one you definitely need. It's obtained by completing Regina Jones's 23 gigs. Uh, the very last thing she does is leave you a message telling you she's put this thing in your mega building apartment stash. Now I know many people are having problems with Regina and her gigs. Some people can't find certain gigs. Some people seemingly are locked out at 19 out of 23, 21 out of 23, 22 out of 23. Well today guys I bring you semi good news. I had all of the same problems so I can relate and I fixed my problems so hopefully I can help fix yours. Now first things first. In total, there are 23 gigs for Regina Jones. These are tied to tiers and will unlock in instances as far as I'm aware. They won't appear all on the map at once. Well, at least that wasn't the case for me. Now, Regina has three quests. The first is Machine Gun. This is tied to Skippy, who will give you this quest after a certain time in game, I believe eight days. Uh, he gives you information on his previous owner. This is Regina Jones. This is where it all starts. Her second quest is called Psycho Killer. This requires you to take out, I believe, 17 cyber cycles found across and around the map. So take them all out upon you doing this guys well for me nothing actually happened this is where i thought i'd get that cool this is what confused me but actually guys it goes on to trigger the third quest uh, which is called the last call you have to complete all 23 gigs in the watson area so let's go ahead and complete every gig in that watson area that you can see and like i said they're in tiers some might unlock upon you completing others this is what happened with me I would also recommend guys you going into your menu and clicking on every single shard that's highlighted just in case one is tied to a gig from her and it's needed to complete the said gig or mission. Also what I do is I go into your messages and make sure you haven't got anywhere she's waiting for a reply to complete said gig. I had a couple of these so read all unread messages too just in case. From here guys, if you are still stuck and you've got let's say 22 out of 23 or 23 out of 23, you may just have to progress more of the game. There may be a gig hiding somewhere that you need to progress. But if you've got 23 out of 23 and you haven't had that last cool pop up or that message from her saying that she's left you something in your stash, go to your mega building apartment and sleep for 15 or above hours. This should hopefully trigger that message from Regina. She tells you basically that she's left you something in your stash. This is the last call. This is that final gig, that final quest. This is that. When you pick up that item out of your stash, it completes the last call. It's as simple as that, guys. So I really do hope this helps you out because this is one amazing piece of cyberware I don't want you guys to miss out on. Okay, so next up, guys, we have the Militech. Epogee, Sandev, a man, oh man, this piece of cyberware is incredible. Now, what I will say is, once you reach uh, that of around a level 40, this can appear out in the open world as a random drop. I've seen multiple people get this from random crates, but for me, it was sold by Victor within Watson, as seen on screen now, within this location. This appeared for me though, once I hit a level 40, but yes, this is definitely one you also want to get, guys.
was thinking about swapping some chrome. You got any new toys? Have a look. Next up people we have the newly added Mantis Blade types, my favourite being the electrifying Mantis Blades, but there's also Thermal Toxic and I believe more. Now with the mods for Cyberware like the Electric mods, Now Void and Gone, CDPR have added instead amazing replacements. These ain't iconic or anything like that but it's kind of new so I thought I'd add it to this video. People will want to know about these, they are absolutely incredible. Now what I will say is that these can drop at random from certain enemies. I mean I actually had two pairs within the same building of a gig I was finishing up on for that Regina last cool quest to pop so I was really surprised in doing this. But I do believe guys you can buy them at a certain level, it could be a level 40 at certain Ripper Ducks. The one you see on the screen now guys sell three pairs of these amazing things including the electrifying one So head over here guys once you're around that level 40 and see if he has them for you because these ones you do not want to miss Okay, so next up guys, we have the Nihan knife. This is on the body of Saburo Arasaka, who you can loot towards the end of the highest mission real early on guys. So if you have started a new playthrough, grab this while you are here. There's also a pistol on the bedside cabinet and there's also guys, when you escape this building, there is a uh, a katana that goes hand in hand with this Nihan which you'll find on the helipad inside of the helicopter but the two guys up there that you need to take at first so keep that in mind my beautiful people now i do believe there is a way to come back here if you pass this point or your save is way past this point like mine is the problem here though is if you originally looted his body when you get back here up to this building, the penthouse, if you loot his body previously, his body will be empty and he won't have no loot for you. So keep that in mind. Okay, so another new iconic was added in the way of Sasquatch's hammer. Now actually, it was in the game before, but now it is actually an iconic and it's a pretty decent weapon. Um, now this uh, enemy you come across during the mission of I Walk the Line. This mission is also pretty early on. Now during this mission you have the option to fight her when you come to her but she can be a little bit of a pain in the ass because of that regen she has and to destroy that purple crystal on her back. But guys you can sneak past her and grab this iconic weapon as you can see me doing this on screen now. This is the easy way out if you do not want to fight her you can still get her iconic weapon but that choice is yours. Okay, so we're going to move on to the new Thermal Katana, the Aretta. A great weapon for sure, this one literally sets enemies ablaze. Now this weapon you will first come across during your playthrough via the campaign mission called Disaster Piece, where you go looking for Evelyn with Judy. Now towards the end of this mission guys, within this building, you're fighting your way through the fogs and you will come to this furnace room. Right here under furnace guys lies this Katana. Now if you are past this mission, you can still come back and grab this, but you will need at least a level 20 in your technical ability uh, to open a door to get this katana. 
as the door used in the mission is now locked and you have to take a different route but yes so again guys follow where i go on screen now from outside of the building pinpoint it on the map for people who use timestamps and come and get this thing Okay, so next up guys, we have the Dying Light. Now with this one, I ain't certain, but I do believe a few things have changed with the way it looked in its original appearance. I also believe this was originally meant to be a reward for a side gig called Shoot to Thrill. What I can tell you this is not the case right now. This side job rewards you the Lexington X Mod 2 with the Legacy skin. The Dying Light is brought from the NPC who you get this side job from. So I've come to your mega building apartment in Watson and then follow the path I take to the Second Amendment weapons shop. Here guys speak to Robert Wilson, if you've already done this shoot to fill side job, skip this part, if you haven't, take part. If you get a score of 40 or above, you win the Lexington X Mod 2. But either or, Robert now becomes a vendor for you, he sells you weapons. So here guys, you can simply go and buy the Dying Light iconic pistol from him. Now I ain't sure if this is new, I just believe it's changed up a bit, especially in its appearance. But I'm sure someone knows more than me down below in the comments. Okay, so now we're going to check out three brand new vehicles to 2.0. So let's start. Okay, so firstly guys, we have the new weaponized vehicle you can simply buy from any computer terminal which allows you to access the Auto Fixer website. I went to my mega building apartment, you guys can do the same. Buy any computer terminal which allows you to access the Auto Fixer website, click on said website and go to the Archer category. It should be top of the list. And then guys, you want to purchase the new Quartz Spectre. And to be honest, although it's 70k plus eddies, this is my new favourite car. This thing has it all. Amazing handling, it's fast, has built in weapons. I mean, I seriously love it. Okay, so next up guys, we have the Ken Block Tribute Car. The Quadra Type 66 Hoon. Now with this vehicle, for most players who have progressed the story a little, it's simply just lying around waiting for you to go and find it. Now what I will say is, if you get here and the car isn't here for you, 
it is, I believe, tied to a mission that you need to progress past. And I believe you have to progress the mission of where you meet Takamura at the restaurant for the first time. The mission is called Playing for Time. So once you get this mission out of the way, probably skip time by 24 hours before heading out here to grab this car. So on screen now guys, you can see where this car is found. Once you get here, you will be met by Johnny. Okay, so once you land here guys, from here, search this pile of rubbish. Within here guys, you will find the keys to the car. Then, simply get in it and the car is yours Try for good. Okay, so the third and final car we have is the Demiurge Monster Truck. Now, I've already made a guide on this video which I will let play out in a second, but I do need to add a few more further details on it before I do so. Now what you see in this video is the very first time I have interacted with said laptop and arcade game. I have never played this arcade game and I have never touched anything else in this computer room before what you see in this video. So that's all I believe needs to be done. I have seen people state that you don't even need to come to this room. You don't need to touch your laptop or the arcade game for this to work. For me, I tried sitting on that damn mattress for days straight and nothing triggered. It only worked after I'd come to this computer room and logged into that laptop. So yes, what you guys are about to see is what triggered this secret cutscene for me. Now the time in which you can do this I believe can be different but I believe it needs to be done in the AM not PM. Now if you guys are lost in what I'm saying and haven't got a clue what I'm talking about check it out now and it should make sense to you. Okay so first things first you need to come to this point on the map right here. Now it is out in these sticks you will have to drive a bit during a, um, a tr fast travel point anywhere near here so yes you will have to drive a bit. But once you get here guys, you will notice there's this secret room which has got computers, it's got servers, it's got an arcade machine there with that Arasaka uh, 3D game on it. Ignore that for now. What you want to do guys is you want to skip time until you get to about, well just before 4am. It doesn't matter if it's 30 minutes game time before 4am, just make sure it's before 4am. Now I'm not sure if this is needed, I'm showcasing to you guys exactly how I did this. I skipped to just before 4am. Then what I did guys was I stood in front of this computer right here as you can see on screen now and I waited until the game time top right corner where you can see your in game time hit 4 a.m. Now what I will say is, and this is an absolute promise to you, I have never interacted with this computer before, I've never played the arcade game, the Arasaka 3D uh, game before, never ever, that's a promise. So this definitely works, you don't have to do any of the hard stuff, which by the way if you are interested in, I'll link a video down below by little Danny B, he showcases the whole, <laughs> the whole puzzle, it's long, it's long winded, it's not my kind of thing. But you also get to see a great easter egg uh, cinematic as well you don't get to see that the golden cube easter egg via doing it this way what i'm showcasing to you guys today so if you want to see that as well check out his video i will link it down below 
But yes, guys, none of that is needed. You can still get this vehicle and this is what you have to do. So as soon as 4 a.m. hits, what you want to do is interact with the computer and log in. Just do what I do. Read all the messages for the first time as I do. Just do what? Just do that. Simple. Once you've done that, guys, then go to the arcade machine. You don't have to play it. Nothing. Just interact with it as I did. And then I left it. I just exited the game. Simple. From here guys, you need to come to this point on the map. Now this point and what you have to find here is pretty difficult. Uh, it took me about 20 minutes to find it, but I do know exactly where it is. Uh, but hey, come here, come to this point on the map. And what you want to do guys here is get here as fast as you can. So don't do anything in between. Just come here as fast as you can. If I were you, I'd probably drive to your nearest fast travel point and then fast travel over here as I do on screen. So yeah, do that guys. So once you land at this fast travel point, which is the one I recommend you come in to, drive to where I go to and exactly where I go to. Simple. So once you get here guys, get out of your car and follow the path I take on screen. Now you're looking for a mattress. Now what I will say is guys, if you're having trouble finding it like this, I did record a video earlier which is a bit more lighter, you can see it a little bit better. I'll play that on screen now. This is exactly where this mattress is pinpointed. So watch that guys and I'll catch you back in a quick second. Okay, so back to the original video. So yes, I'm coming here guys. It's still before 5 a.m., which is perfecto. So what you wanna do guys is you wanna stand on this mattress. Just stand on it and be AFK. I think it takes around 55 minutes in game time. Uh, so yes, you have to stand here AFK in game time. If I were you, I'd just watch that uh, time in your top right hand corner. I wouldn't go into your menu or anything like that. Just stand here and watch that time. I mean, I think it's like, like I said, 55 minutes could be an hour, but you have to stand here for that time. AFK. It's game time, by the way. So that's, it's probably about five, 10 minutes, if that, uh, in real life time. So you should be good. Now, what should happen, guys, is you should get like your choking, your your malfunctioning and you'll just black it out. Now, the method I linked in the video description where it goes through the entire thing of entering all kinds of different puzzles and numbers and stuff. At this point, you will get like a golden cube cinematic, but doing it the way I'm showcasing to you today, you do not see that. All you see is a mysterious person who we do not know the identification of. Eventually guys, you will wake up and right in front of you will be this demiurge monster truck. 
get in it guys and it is yours for good drive it around night city drive it around the desert as i was doing having tons of fun but yes guys this is now yours okay so lastly for today's video people we have the secret rewards from the new trauma drama arcade game now i've already made a video on this uh to make it super easy i'll link that down below in the video description but the rewards you get here are the trauma team outfit which is pretty cool and you also get an amazing ornament toy for your apartment that flies around so it's as simple as you beating the top score on this game and you receive a text message about it i say simple but it definitely isn't simple what i do now guys is i play out my other video guide so you guys can see what you gotta do how you do it and get these rewards so there are arcade machines basically in certain parts around night c but the one i found and used uh, you can see right here on the screen now now what i will say is you used to be able to reset these arcade machines if you came here and it wasn't the game you wanted uh, by skipping time by 24 hours. That may still work, I ain't too sure. But if you come here and it isn't trauma drama, try skipping time. See if that helps. But yes, this is where I found this game. Now when you come here guys, there can sometimes be a gang members here who you may have to take out first. Okay, so when you start the game, uh, go to that top score section you will see the top score is 440,000. And let me tell you, to beat this, it is not easy. If you die more than a few times, odds are even if you complete this game, you won't get that top score. So yes, it is very hard. Now if you get top 10 of the leaderboards, you will get a text message. But this isn't the one you want. This means nothing. It actually confused me at first. You need to get top score to earn these rewards. So eventually guys, if you do get that top score, you also guys don't have to actually complete the game to get the uh, the text message you need. As long as you have that top score, it doesn't matter if you complete the game or not. So if you die with that top score, let the timer run down guys, back out of the game, and you'll get the text message you want. So the text message basically asks you to apply to become part of the team. But you have to do it via a computer. Now for me, my mega building apartment, although it has a computer, it didn't have the actual trauma team website on it, so I couldn't access it. What I had to do was on this computer, I had to buy a 40 grand apartment in Galen. So that's what I did and that's where I went. There guys, I could access the website. So click their website guys and on their website, you need to first click on that trauma team members access and click next. From here guys, you need to click on we want you, the tab of we want you. Here guys, scroll to the bottom and click apply. If it gets stuck on processing, click a different tab and come back. You will eventually get a message basically saying you ain't fit for the job, but there's rewards waiting for you. So from here guys, you need to come to the little China medical building in Watson. So fast travel to where I do on screen now people. Now, once you get here, guys, follow the short path I take. Oh, hey. Here, you have to scan your hand and then you can open up the box and collect your rewards. You get a trauma uh, team outfit as well as an amazing ornament sort of toy thing for your mega building apartment. So yes guys, a great set of rewards, definitely worth your time in doing this. But there we have it guys, I believe all known new items added with patch 2.0. If I've missed anything specific, please do let me know down below. But guys, if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and hopefully guys, I will see you on that next one.